Welcome to Wolves' match of the 70s. Over the next 90 minutes, we'll be taking you down memory lane, reliving the magic memories of a superb decade. The highlight of brilliant League Cup final triumph against Manchester City. Boston again for Sunderland. And now it's the chance for Richards. Oh, and he's done it! John Richards! That Wembley glory followed the pain of a Cup final defeat by Spurs in the UEFA Cup. Wolves edged out by the odd goal in five over two legs. But what an achievement by Bill McGarry's team. To help us bring those memories back to life, we reunited some of the Wolves' heroes who starred in the 70s. We kick off the action with a six-goal thriller against Southampton back in October 1971. Parkin or Wagstaff to chase. Fry is with Wagstaff, as he has been from the kickoff. Hegan. Good running by Hegan. Oh, and a chance for Dugan! Derek Dugan. But the construction of that goal without any doubt at all. The beauty of the pass from Danny Hegan. Wagstaff, Hegan, and Dugan, the killer stroke on the end of it. Gabriel. Shannon, Terry Payne on the right side. Payne, good little chip ball, and that's Kirk up. Joe Kirk up. What a neat little goal, and what a superb run. It's 1 1 now. Joe Kirk up scoring his first goal of the season, and he hasn't had too many in his whole career. First free kick of the game, of the second half, that is. Going to Wolves, obviously for something somebody said. Indirect free kick. No defensive wall. Wagstaff to whack one. Oh, and what a goal! No, no! It's been ruled out. It's been ruled out. It was an indirect free kick and referee Styles has his hand still in the air must be honest I was caught too Stokes Gabriel the challenge with McCall Bailey away and that's uh, Southampton ball Terry Payne taking lots of time. Gabriel for Shannon. Terry Payne. Oh, what a good return ball for Shannon. Whoops. Indirect free kick. And the... Referee being mobbed in by Southampton players. Demanding the penalty kick. Indirect inside the box, it is. So that none of us, including me, get caught out again. It being an indirect free kick. The ball must strike somebody before it goes into the net. I don't think Terry Payne will make the same mistake that Wagstaff did. And that's Shannon. That wasn't a bad goal at all, at all, at all. That's the way to do it while they're still hanging about. And Parks really looking desolate on his line then. 
Five minutes into the second half, and it's 2-1 to Southampton. Bailey, a long one, aiming for Dugan. He hits it down. Kirk up away. And again, Wolves come storming in again. John McCall. Dugan. Must be able the chance. He's there. Derek Dugan. Dugan makes it 2-2, and there is a very disconsolate goalkeeper and a very happy Derek Dugan. Look at the smile on his face. 2-2 the scoreline. John McCall was the man who slammed the ball forward. McGrath failed in the tackle on Dugan. And he saw the opening on the far post, scores his second goal of the game. Now we're wondering, can he get another hat-trick? This seems surely to be the long one. Dugan was in the sandwich between McGrath and Kirkup. Waxed up. Well done. Dugan just... And he's pointed to the penalty. McGrath, I think it was, who got the hand to it. Referee Styles right in the middle there. From this angle, it was difficult to see. Dugan went in on that ball. Referee Styles has pointed to the spot. Dugan is already over the ball. Dugan will be looking now for a hat-trick. No, Dugan's put the ball away. The, hat the penalty kit man will be parking. The moment of truth, then, for goalkeeper Martin. Ten minutes to go to the end of the game. Parker with a kick. And no, it's going to be taken again. Referee Styles was blowing his whistle as Parkin went up. What a let off. And referee Styles calling people over to him. Referee Styles had blown his whistle before Parkin took the kick, indicating that some infringement was on and that he didn't intend for the kick to be taken at that moment. So Parkin, who hits the post, gets himself another crack at it. And that's a very nervous fullback out there at this moment. Here he goes. That one he scores. It's 3-2 then. For Southampton. 3-2 against Southampton. Derek Parkin. Score of one goal. Dugan going through in the picture. The score of the two previous goals. Parkin. A couple of Harvey Smith signals to anybody who cares to uh, take note of them. And a phlegmatic expression on his face. Dugan has Hegan to play with out there. The Wolves get another one now. It will be the killer punch. Hegan. There it is, Steve Daly. Steve Daly. And there's the picture of a happy fella. 4 2 to Wolves now. And Steve Daly scoring a goal in the first full league match that he's ever played in. And it all looked so easy. But it was Danny Hegan who set it up. Dugan was involved, Hegan the man who set up the earlier goal for Dugan, setting up a perfect unmissable chance then for Steve Daly and he took it perfectly. I seem to remember the uh, Gabriel, I think it was, the centre back, had a goal at me mm -hmm. when I missed the first, when I hit the post with the first one. And he said something to me as I went to place it again. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we usually do, like you usually have a go at the player. So mm -hmm. you know, Sledgy. And, uh, I think it was just that, really. Nerves are still there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you think, oh, God. No, no, no sweat. What? Oh, no, no sweat. sweat. No sweat. <laughs> sweat in water. Why did he make you take it again? Uh, he, he hadn't blown the whistle, John, I don't think. <laughs> this is a must in football, you know. Really. Yeah. Mm. But, I, I, you know, I got carried away. and I, I just Excited, were you? Yeah. Thing, yeah. And, and Steve Daly, the go on his full game, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, I did well with that, yeah. He was away, wasn't he, when he scored? Yeah. Nobody could catch him. Uh, didn't want to catch him, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I think what was nice to see was um, like people like Danny Hegan. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Danny was um, an absolute brilliant player. Mm. He got his problems off the pitch, but uh, when you saw there, you know, he made two goals with so simple passes. Yeah. And the goals were very simple themselves, but that was 
that was Danny skill and he was a very talented player and unfortunately I don't think we ever saw the best of Danny Heegan. <laughs> So Hinton has the free kick. Hinton, Webster, number two. And all this time, the referee is having a pretty stern word with uh, Parkin. Now the free kick can be taken. Hinton, got to be a goalkeeper's ball. O'Hare scores! And the tragedy is against John McCall, John O'Hare. For Derby, 22 minutes gone. Park's a very angry man. The tragedy then, John McCall getting his head to a ball which should have been a goalkeeper's ball all the way from the free kick. And O'Hare, the easiest chance in the world to score. Mike Bailey. Hinton. John O'Hare. Todd now. Not quite the ball he intended. Dugan. Ghosting away from two fairly hearty pieces of tackling then. Second one producing the free kick. Shaw to take it. Now the first one produced the free kick. It's McFarland. Shaw now with this free kick for Wolves. Time ticking away from them towards half time. Goalkeeper's come and lost it. And that is number nine, John Richards. It's a level score at 1 1. Well, John Richards really banged the equaliser in. Only the second goal he's ever scored in league football. The goal made by Dugan's jump when Shaw's kick came over. Bolton came, missed the ball. And Richards hammers it in. Parkin now using Monroe. Might try one. Hibbit. Dugan. And uh, finally Richards. Richards gets the goal. who started this game with only one league goal in the whole of his career has doubled his total in this one match. 2-1 then to Wolves. But the determination of Dugan on the ground, Hibbert joining in and Richards getting on the end of that kerfuffle on the goal mouth area. Thirty-eight thousand people saw Spurs take a first-leg lead through the mighty Martin Chibbers. Superbly taken. Chibbers picked the ball cleanly. A kick taken by England. Watch the goalkeeper start to come. He can't get there. He has to go back. Caught in no man's land, but the credit to Chivers, a brilliant header, 1-0 to Spurs. So a free kick to Wolves just outside the box. Quickly taken, Hagen, Bakaliog, Swaric. Chivers. Chivers again. Gilzine spreading out. What a shot! Pick that one out! In the return leg, Mullery's goal was enough to win the cup. And it'll be Martin Peters hitting one. And Mullery's got it! And Mullery! He's got it! And Hegan hitting one, and just as well for Spurs that hit Mullery. Taylor whacking it back in there again. And finally it was uh, Veal who got it away. Oh, and a great goal! A great goal there! 
know, we've just watched the UEFA Cup final highlights and... Exciting match, John. Well, having watched us beat the best in Europe, it was so disappointed to lose to Spurs. Especially as I think most neutrals would have thought that Wolves deserved more than they got. Yeah, and I actually think because of the fact we met another English club in the final, we weren't really given the the credit and the coverage for our achievements in the earlier rounds. Uh, we played against some really top quality European teams and we beat them. When we, you look at our record, even in the final, we never lost an away leg, which takes some doing when you're looking at, you know, you're talking about playing teams like Spurs, Juventus, who were without doubt one of the top teams in Europe at that time. I think they won one, one, one of the European Cups the previous season and won, won then the following season. And they got some superb players and we went there and we drew one all and beat them down here at Molyneux. And we did, this, did the same with other teams like Ferenc Baris and Karl Zeiss So the, the, these were top quality teams in Europe and we were, we were very much the underdogs. I don't think anybody actually expected us to have a reasonable run and it, uh, we took everybody's surprise by surprise and we were disappointed ourselves we must confess when we we got Spurs in the final because as I said it was an all English affair very little coverage from Europe as far as you know we were concerned and then obviously we had a very disappointed home match and I think in fact it was the first time we'd actually played the first leg at home and we lost that, and that really put us uh, up against it for the away match. We were always going to be struggling um, going away with uh, two away goals against us. Carry on. On again for Hibbert. Must come for Wagstaff. It roar from the crowd. Hibbert for the shot. Good one too. Hibbert really can blast them. Unmistakable figure of Bobby Charlton. Done. A good try. Tony Dunn. Score of only two goals in a career of 400 odd. Oh, just about 400 league games. And Vinny nearly scored his third then. <laughs> Flick off by Richards picking up McCallyog. That's Dugan through the middle. Oh, he did that so perfectly. Dugan hardly. He broke sweat then as he went in to put walls in front, one nothing. Beautiful piece of work. McCallion setting it up for Dugan. Stepney came well. 25 minutes into the first half, Dugan makes it one nothing. It'll be Hibbert who will take this one. Again, they'll be waiting a bit for Munro to come up into the box. Munro and Dugan. Ten is Dugan and five Munro. There's Munro. And Dugan couldn't get there. James did. McCallion, an awkward one. Good punch then by Stepney. What a difficult ball that was from McCallion. Wagstaff then with the corner. Way across, and that's Hibbert. Well, Stepney certainly earning his corn in that United goal mouth at the moment. Mike Bailey winding himself up as though he's going for the long one. Ball thrown over the goal line. Goal kick. Stepney certainly played a hero's part in this United defence. Quite certain the score would be very much more than one nothing against Manchester United. But for his sterling efforts.
Kidd getting it down. Push back to the way he didn't want to play. Dugan for Wagstaff. Dugan neatly done. That's Taylor. Not a very good cross ball. Jerry Taylor allowing himself the, uh, the liberty of going forward into attack that occasion. Steve James then picking up Charlton. Charlton hitting it long as McElroy goes to the right side. Best is unmarked in the middle at the moment. Again, good saving. Bit of football by Jerry Taylor. Well, it's really quite incredible to see players of such high skills passing so badly. Another chance for Charlton now. And again, he picks out a Wolves man. Nothing going right for now Bobby. Offside flag has certainly got to have Richards offside, and he didn't. And he's still not offside. Well, that is a goal I'm sure that Richards will be delighted about. 2 nothing it is to Wolves. But I am quite convinced in my own mind that as that break to de developed, Richards was in an offside position, and he looked very much like being offside again when the pass came across from Dugan. But he did his job perfectly at the end of it. And John uh, Man United at the time we played them there, they, they were in decline really, but uh, still a crowd puller. Yeah, without a doubt, and you see they've got the quality players there like Bobby Charlton, they were always going to pull in a big crowd. And it was always, always a good game to win, you know, to beat Man United. Even if you were 30 yards offside. Do you think so, John? Uh, well, it yeah. was iffy. I thought that the, the, the ball was a bit slow coming forward, and obviously uh, I wasn't in, interfering with play when Derek got the ball. <laughs> so um, I, then, I then made sure I was behind him when he passed it. But uh, I, it was debatable, I suppose. But. Uh, they still have to score the goals. And they still count, don't they, John? It was count, mate. Yeah, we are. I didn't even think because I'm the rules of play. Correct, yes. You were in hospital at the time, weren't you, Yeah, I was, John, yeah. yeah. With? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Dugan against Barry, and Barry won it. Shaw much too strong. Hoping to pick up number 11, Wagstaff. Will Smith for Coventry. Steen. Mortimer going well, this boy. Alderson, well stopped by Taylor. Willie Carr now, nobody stretched wide on the flanks. Well taken down by Wagstaff. An early ball, hoping to pick up Richards. Parker's there. Munro knocks it forward again. Dugan against Barry. And Dugan gets the touch on. Richards, the speed of him. He must be in for it. He's got it. John Richards. Six minutes in the game, and young John Richards keeps his cup tie. Goal again, streak going. Scored against Bristol City, scored against Millwall. And here in six minutes, he's put Wolves in front. The through ball, John Richards outstripping young Bobby Parker, who couldn't last the pace on the run towards goal. And Richards slipping it in, inside the right-hand post. A tremendous start for Wolves, 1-0. Coventry now. Coming forward, McCallie out stops them, and Wagstaff has hardly touched the ball so far. Picks up Shaw. Wide here for Hibbert. Catlin coming in to face him. Good ball. Jimmy McCallion. Just a little bit too fast for him, and McCallion pulled up then, and looking now 
as though he might have pulled a muscle at the back of his right leg. It certainly looked as though he started for that ball, as though he would get it. Dugan! Harriet! No! No, John Homewood kills Dugan's... Kills Dugan's smile of triumph. He spotted a foul inside the six-yard box. 33 minutes into the first half, and it's still 1-0. Dugan's header, not allowed. Munro up, but it's falling for Steen. A little touch was all that was needed to feed it to uh, Hutchison. Brief reminder for viewers in black and white that the colours may look very similar to you. The Coventry players perhaps quickly identifiable because their numbers are on their dark shorts is all right when they're facing you, but I imagine it's not too good when they've got their backs to you. Dugan got a small tickle on it. Mortimer tries to hook it out, didn't win it. Richards! Whack down and this penalty's given. Penalty given. The two fullbacks, Kathleen and Coop, together, knocking John Richards. Sprawling and referee John Homewood is on that spot. He's given the penalty. Bill Glazier, only last week, saved a penalty from the best man in the business, Franny Lee. Now the pressure building on Bill Glazier again. I wonder what thoughts are going through his mind. Hibbert is the man that he faces. Hibbert, who's already hit two penalties this season in cup ties, neither of them in the FA Cup. And Hibbert hits a very firm ball. All the pressure then on Bill Glazier. And he's there. It's 2-0 to the Wolves. Glazier gets the right way. He dived and he couldn't have been more than a couple of inches away from that ball when he hit the ground. But it's 2-0 to the Wolves. And then the, the sort of midfield dynamo impression. Is that me? You, yeah, cutting inside, laying balls off, calling players towards you. Oh, yeah. yeah You're prepared. domineering, weren't you? Yeah. And JR, that's the match that really established you as Wolf centre forward, wasn't it? Yes, because I'd, um, I'd yes. previous season probably substitute a lot and then having the odd game. Come into a good save, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah With yeah. good players yeah. who made me look better than, better than really what it was. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was because they'd only scored one goal prior to that, and, and 50, uh, got two, yeah, 50 appearances. <laughs> so it wasn't a very good average. And, um, and really, it was about the I think it was actually in the October November <coughs> season, and it was then that I actually sort of got a regular place in the in the first team. Lethal finishing for the second goal. Oh, yeah, yeah. as well, the, the power it was frightening, <laughs> wasn't it? You know, it nearly broke the net. You did you shouldn't did it for I don't know what it is. You count them anyway, don't you? Yeah. <laughs>
was another very good move indeed by Wolves. And Richards, who was put through, as Wilson certainly came out quickly to make it difficult, flicked it just wide. Wagstaff. Hegan. Parkin. Dugan. Oh, and that'll do for Dugan! Well, he's made one or two rather clumsy errors, Derek Dugan. But when that ball came through to him there, what a walloping start to the season for Derek Dugan to put Wolves 2-0 ahead. Again, Radford jumping and getting into good position, but McCallion getting it away. Well, Blockley missed that one, and Richards is on his way again. Simpson coming across to cover. Dugan is right in there, and that's played nicely for Sunderland, and just across the face of that goal. Another beautiful break there by Wolves. And everybody thought that the uh, pass by Richards was a bad one, because Dugan wasn't there to take it, but uh, we hadn't noticed just how quickly Alan Sunderland was coming up. Again, a question mark against this Arsenal defence. Let it be said, an Arsenal defence without the stabilising influence of two men, and there's Hornsby going in. While we were clearing the defence at one end, it was the Wolves' defence that let them down badly, and Brian Hornsby going in to put it past Parks to put Arsenal back in the game. Parks unhappy with it. So the way he was exposed to allow Hornsby in. Alan Ball. Kennedy. McNabb. Forward towards Radford trying to fight off. One and then another. And now here's Hornsby again. And he missed his chance. But he's got a corner. And that really was within an ace of making it a tremendous match from this Cambridgeshire boy. Having scored one for Arsenal, he was very position to make it two. But a goal kick, or rather a corner to Arsenal. Palmer there, the Wolves defender, Alan Ball for Arsenal. Park it in there too. Hornsby with the corner, coming now. Lockley in there, the fist of Parks getting it away. Chambers. Well, this is a good pipe opener now. Hornsby keeping it in skillfully and finding Batson. And that's a goal kick. Taylor. Oh, good tricks there by Wagstaff. Beautifully played for McCallion. What a good piece of play by Wagstaff. And he's got Richards and Dugan up in there. Richards reacting just a little quicker than Blockley, too. Turn back again. He hoped towards Wagstaff. Chambers now. And Dugan! And a simple one for Dugan! With Arsenal all over the place again. A ball that wobbled around and really should never have got through to Dugan in any way. Comes through to the number 10. And Dugan makes it 3-1. First game in the senior team, um, so I'm obviously a 19-year-old lad who's trying to impress. So it was. Um, so you were whacking everybody. So you, was, <laughs> you were whacking balls over the bar. Well, it was just yeah. the start of my illustrious hey, career. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deflecting that ball as McCallion desperately tried to get a shot in. John McCall. Monroe, early ball. Richards, turned beautifully! Johnny Richards, if he could have finished that shot with the beautiful ease with which he started his own move. What a goal that might have been. Dugan getting a good solid touch on that. 
Lawler for Liverpool. Cole winning it. Peter Cormack then for Liverpool. That's Jefferson. Lawler for Liverpool. Cormack again. Richards, good challenge. And Lloyd gets it though. Oh, he should have let that one go. He's given the free kick to Liverpool. It was a clumsy uh, tackle by Richards. Could have given the advantage. Toshak across the box and Keegan! It's 1-1! One, one. Well, that's how those two Liverpool front runners work together. 1-1. One, one. 15 minutes into the first half. The cross into the box. Toshak getting the touch square. Kevin Keegan, number seven, an unmissable chance. Lloyd losing it. Dugan made himself in there. Oh, that's got to be a booking. That has positively got to be a booking against Larry Lloyd. That was a cast-iron chance setting itself up for Derek Dugan then. As Larry Lloyd drags him down. Well, they talk about the professional foul, and there was a clear-cut case of it. But all Lloyd will get is a booking. And Liverpool at that moment were about to be punished, I'm quite certain in my own mind, by having a second goal scored against them. The game at Anfield back in September was a fairly exciting affair. Four men were booked in it. One was sent off, Jimmy McCallion. And here's the first booking of the afternoon for Larry Lloyd. Dugan getting there and going again. Shaw. Sure. Rather lost the ge geography of the position for a moment then. Found it again quickly with Wagstaff. The low ball, Sunderland. Just isn't breaking for Wolves then. And they needed to be a little bit more positive with that attack. Shaw, who started the last one off, decides Monroe can start this one. And still goes to the same fellow, though, Wagstaff. Very nearly slipped it through. Wagstaff again. Might as well try the shot. Not now. Dugan! Lindsay, the interception. What a timely one, too. Jefferson, Wolves building up ahead of steam again. Wagstaff. Not much backlift with that cross ball. Sunderland knocks it on, Smith knocks it out. And Jefferson will build it again. McCallion. Back for McCall. Looking into the box and hit it too low. Still the pressure there. McCall, Sunderland, good ball, McCallion, Shaw, Richards if he can turn, he's on for it, he's got it, John Richards, 34 minutes, and John Richards gets that elusive goal he's been looking for for so long, it's 2-1 Wolves, but look back on it to Bernard Shaw, the man who was dragged in as the last-minute replacement for the suspended Danny Hegan. Playing in an unaccustomed position, it sets up the goal. There was a big appeal for offside, but Richards knocked it in. It was always nice to score off against Liverpool. It was always nice to beat them. We, we actually did very well against Liverpool in the early 70s. And uh, it was always nice against Emlyn because he was moaning so much. Can't he always used to complain about offsides and everything. And uh, to put one over them, on them was, uh, was was good for Wolves and good for the Wolves crowd because um, they were they were without doubt one of the best teams at that particular time. The sort of crowds that you were looking at was what 40, 50,000 for these sort of matches. And I think that's what people forget. Um, the, the crowds that the Wolves were attracting in the early 70s, were, some of the games were frightening. But the atmosphere was, was terrific. It was mm -hmm. really, the that was the difference when I come from um, 
from uh, Coventry to the Wolves was um, mm. Coventry is a, a sort of very cosmopolitan sort of town, and but when I come to the Wolves, it, it was just the actual the amount of supporters that they uh, that they'd got, which I'd never actually seen before at uh, at Coventry. Um, Coventry, you'd always got a few if you were doing really really well, they'd come out of the um, out the out the cupboards and stuff like that, you know. But we'd we'd probably our average gate was probably then about um, I don't know about maybe fifteen or sixteen thousand. But come to the Wolves, and it'd be double that. And that was the difference I found between the mm. between the, the two the two clubs. Um, the Wolves were sort of like steeped in tradition, where Coventry was a very sort of go ahead sort of um, club, but never actually won anything. So it was, so it was, it was young, in a sense, mm. uh, and, and that was the difference that I found between the two. Between the two was the, um, it was just tradition really, more than anything else. Win against Manchester City, well, in uh, great season, we won the League Cup again and finished sixth in the league. Yeah, and uh, the thing I remember about that game was that uh, Stevie played Stevie Daly, who had um, sort of left his um, was it the season before or something yeah, like that. No, earlier that season. Yeah, and uh, well, are we? That year we'd uh, we got to the League Cup final, did we? And uh, we had um, the the way that we played, there wasn't a lot of going, there wasn't going to be a lot of people who'd sort of beat us as well. And I think we ended up in sixth place or something like that and won the League Cup as well. So it was very very successful season it was. We'd we'd actually had a lot of changes. We got a new manager. An assistant. We've got John Barwell and Richie Barker, and they brought what you would call as older players into the team, but experienced players, people like Andy Gray, Emily Hughes, to team up with a lot of the, the former, well, the players who've been there a long time, with one or two younger ones coming through, like George Berry. And we had a, as, as a blend, it worked. And I would say it only worked for that particular season. We had a successful season in the league, we won the League Cup, but the season prior to that we were a bit iffy and immediately after that, like two years later, we, we were relegated again. So it was just that one-off season and I think the reason was we'd got a lot of players who were getting old at the same time and there wasn't really enough changes made. <laughs> Talbot's coming back to him, it's on with a shot, left footed, what a beautiful goal! Oh, <laughs> what a smasher! Hibbert, five minutes into the first half. So one error. So one error by Ipswich, Hibbert breaking out for his sixth goal of the season. Only the third game he scored in. Pivot breaking in on goal on that one error by Ipswich and hammers a beautiful left-footed drive past Lorisimo. one nothing Wolves. Monroe there. Lambert. Save, in fact. A lot of pressure on him there. It's 
Lambert getting it over. Mills stretching it wide for Lambert. Again, it was McCall's head that gets it clear. Powell. They have delayed it too long. Parkin now, far side of the field. Hibbert is unmarked. Bailey tried to pick him up and badly mistimed his pass. Bill Jern for Woods. Yes, Woods gets the foul against Parkin. into the box and Mills is on for a shot it's a beauty Rick Mills looking for his first goal of the season and he wasn't very far away with it brought a very first class save from Phil Parks Hibbert he gets himself a corner Noticeable that Hibbert is playing much further upfield in the second half, playing a very orthodox wing roll. Wolves deciding that it's best to attack with two wingers against the uh, Ipswich fullbacks to keep them pinned back. Here's the corner. It's a good one. And it's in there. What a fine goal. Munro. That went in like a rocket off Munro's head. 2-1 Wolves. Brent Munro's first league goal of the season. First goal of the season. And 2-1 to Wolves. So that corner floating over from Farley. And Munro bulleting the header into the net. Watching that Frank Munro winner there. Frank was a quality centre half wasn't he? Oh yeah, fantastic player, yeah. yeah. And Hibby too, I mean the two goal scorers in that match, um, they, they were both first class players really. Yeah, probably, you know, I mean at, at the time that I played, they they were probably two of the most consistent players, you know, over a sort of period of about seven, eight, eight years. You know, first class players. Hibby must have been one of the bargains of all time. About oh, five, yeah. five grand from Bradford Park, haven't you? You know, Kenny was a quality player. You know, uh, good balance, two good feet. You know, and served well for you know, 13, 14 years. Mm. You know, first class player. Some of his goals were absolutely superb, weren't they? Yeah, you know, that was that was not unusual, that type of goal from Kenny. You know, from just outside the box where he's striking with his left mm. or right foot and it fly into the into the net. Tremendous straight over the ball. He scored four in one game, didn't he? Against, against Newcastle. his Newcastle when his brother Terry was playing on the uh, on the other side. Mm. I remember that. And I remember one shot, it nearly knocked my head off. It flew past me. And that was his fourth goal. But so he got so much power. And I really think Ken was very unlucky. I think he got uh, one England under twenty three cap, mm. if I recall. And really, he deserved a lot more international recognition than that. I think it was just unfortunate at that time of his, you know, when he was um, at the height of his career, there were so many quality midfield, midfield players about at that particular time. People wide got in well against uh, Munro, but Carr now for Wolves. side is Mr. Harris of Swansea. 
but the confusion comes down. A beautiful ball out then by Willie Carr, left Sunderland completely on his own against the Spragadoo ball, Blues defence, as he looked as though he was going to chip it. He wanted to take on the goalkeeper. Martin brings him down from behind. So Ken Hibbett, scorer of a penalty against Queen's Park Rangers here earlier this season. Now to set Wolves up with 1-0. Oh, and he's covered in confusion. The look on Ken Hibbett's face. I wonder what his brother Terry is shouting at him. No, he's turned his head away. Can't bear to see brotherly agony. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Parkin. Carr. Sunderland, Park. Carr. Have a second stab at it. Bailey. McNabb. Short and simple. Sunderland. For Carr to hit. Beautiful goal. Oh, what a cracker. That was so well worked. Six minutes into the second half, and all this pressure pays off for Willie Carr. Willie Carr scoring his second goal of the season, and he'll not strike many better than that one. Beautifully worked opening, four to five passes, the telling one coming in from McNabb, the header up and down by Sunderland. The Blues wide open as Carr struck it left-footed for a sweet little goal. Martin. Call. Francis now leaving the ball for hope. No, he wants to take it himself. Finds heading for with Hibbert. Far post. Hatton. And that's a beautiful drive by Francis. Back on the target and a lovely reflex action save from Pierce. Trevor Francis can hardly believe his luck there, and he thought he'd got his first goal of the season. The ball nicked across from Hibbert, the header up back from Hatton. Francis making ground, unmarked, driving, bang on target. Pierce reacted well. Martin. Bobby Hope. Francis in behind Wolverhampton. It's a good cross with, and Hatton is there. Off the line, Kendall. Well, that was remarkable. And Wolves immediately strike back. Hibbert. Carr. Hibbert. Oh, and Richards. Should have had that one. Latchford made it a gift. McNabb, the pressure's still on for Birmingham, and they're all over the place. Wagstaff. Roberts gets it clear. Hope away. Francis being chased by Parkin. Parkin brought down from behind by Trevor Francis. The free kick given to Wolves. Well, really there, there was a two glorious chances, one at each end of the park. Hatton's header knocked out from right under the bar when it seemed to have crossed the line. Straight down to the other end for Wolves. And Latchford dropping the ball. Richards unable to knock it back into the goal. So Parkin. Happy that his left leg is still in one piece. Frank Munro. His right knee still very, very heavily, heavily strapped. In fact, it's a heavier strapping on it now than he had in the first half. Malika half away to Francis. Martin. <laughs> Bailey. Into the space for Richards. Willie Carr. That's a good run. What a goal! Absolutely from nowhere. Bob McNabb, John Richards, all applauding. John McCall in. 
Willie Carr, the hero then, 26 minutes into the second half. And really, there was so little on. It was Willie Carr, who has been striking his shots with his left foot, but loaded a terrific drive with the right. And poor old Dave Latchford was left stranded. What I remember about that game was that uh, Mr McGarry had me in the, in the office beforehand and he told me that I, I didn't shoot enough and um, and during that game I thought well every chance I've got I'll, um, I'll have a shot and I had three shots and scored twice. <laughs> and John Richards uh, did that for years didn't he? You know, just had a shot. Yeah, he, was a he was a greedy twat. <laughs> I could have got a hat trick yeah, that game if he would have, if he would have laid it back and I was yeah. shouting like anything and there was no no way. I was normally shot. There's no way I was going to lay it off yeah. of you know that. <laughs> Never even went into position to get it, so you <laughs> knew he wasn't going to come. <laughs>
old-fashioned Wolves attacking style. 25 minutes, a minute after Bruce Lee put Millwall back in the game, and that two-goal gap opens up again. Real opportunity stop. Daly set up on the run, got into space. When that long ball reached him, he didn't hesitate. Turns, whacks the left foot straight in the corner of the net. That season, I can remember that... Um... I think we had four or five players who scored a lot of goals. Um, I think John had a few injuries that season. Um, Alan Sunderland came in, filled in the number nine role, um, scored a few goals. Um, I think the thing that always um, sticks out in my memory, I've just been saying to Willie, I think we, we played Hereford one Saturday, and I think we beat them 6 1. Mm. And I think we played the following Tuesday, and I think we played Southampton. And I'm not right, I could be right in saying it could be five or we lost 6 0 at home to Southampton. 6 2, was it? Yeah. Um, it was just one of them sort of, um, the season, you know, we sort of, um, Kindo was there filling in for other players as well. Filling in with other players, wasn't he, really? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I still think that um, we played that year and we still had a good enough squad to sort of, we went down from the first division and we still got straight back up. Swain to Wilkins, played again for Locke. Finiston's got into the middle, and it won't come to him because Frank Munro is there. Daly, hustled into an error, Finiston, hit the post! Oh my goodness, that was so close for Chelsea! Disarray in that Wolves defence and Finiston nearly caught them out. Enormous stroke of luck for Wolves as that ball hit the post and cannoned away for the corner. Well, that's got the crowd going. Tremendous atmosphere at Stamford Bridge. And Ian Britton with this corner now for Chelsea. Swain coming to him. Britain with time to get a good cross in. And it was Alan Sunderland who got up there. Wilkins trying to knock it back in again with his head. Wicks. Now will... Uh, <laughs> he really couldn't get up steam, uh, Ian Britton, the number seven, to uh, save that pass. Well, I think Dr Henry Kissinger, the guest here today, must be quite impressed with the way this game has gone so far. A lot of good movement in it. Dr Kissinger much more interested at the moment in a fight that's going on in the crowd on this side of the field and I suppose as a mediator he might well feel that he could do something about it. of Chelsea's character now. And Rowe playing it back and playing it too short. Wilkins is in there and it's over the line. Goal given. And Wolves with only themselves to blame. And above all, Frank Munro. A terrible mistake in that Wolverhampton 1 was defence leaving Gary Pierce no 
chance. There's the mistake. There's Wilkins going in. And he was able just to get in there first and nod it over the line. Two goals in the space of one minute. Here's Palmer. Hibbett. Daly. Lewington after him. And tackling him well. But he'd have to do it again. And in the end, Wolves get a throw. Daly with it. Bit of space there for Sunderland. Over the head. And the goal by Bobby Gould. Well, there were a few acrobatics on that byline. And as that came across, and it all began when Sunderland was unmarked, Gould also had plenty of time and space into the back of the net. Richards absolutely electric now, even on this uh, surface. Tremendous acceleration. And Sunderland is no slouch either. Here he is, number nine on the ball. Beaten that time by Hay. Knocked in first time, though. And Kenny Hibbert getting in there with a the header. Richards with the goal! Number three for Wolves. And a Wolves player down injured. But that's the third goal for Wolves. The long cross coming in from the right. And knocked back across the face of the goal for John Richards to get in and beat Benetti in close range. Swain. All good play there by Swain to find Gary Locke. Lewington looking to force his way through there to get a shot in. Oh, and he hit the post! Well, determination took him 90% of the way. As he struggled through to get a clear sighted goal, it was deflected wide of Gary Pierce, but against the post. When Chelsea badly needed a goal, Britt is there! That is a goal! Ian Britton! Chelsea side gets up, near post header, Chelsea's second goal. Hay with the kick. Hay again with the header. Hided down this time by Britton to Locke. Ray Wilkins trying to get Locke along that touchline again. Now can the fullback get his cross in? He's got a corner. So now there's going to be pressure in that Wolves penalty area. Jeff Palmer's one under pressure now. Gary Pierce is also under pressure, pointing out that Kenny Swain is on the goal line. There's the corner going in. And the big men come in. And rifled there and knocked away by a combination of Palmer and Pierce. And the shot there by Lewington. And Wolves in all sorts of trouble. And Pierce, I think, well, I suppose the force with which that ball came in at him, he might well have dislocated a finger. Well, I think he's in a bit of pain. Maybe he twisted a... Maybe he put it out of joint and he's now back in again. He's got a few problems now as they come in again. Gary Stanley! Oh, and what a save! Finiston with the header! Goal given, and Chelsea have equalised! Well, poor old Gary Pierce. A brilliant comeback by Chelsea. Nothing but despair for the poor fellow who's got a bad finger, Gary Pierce. Well, there's a figure of despair. As that corner came in, Gary Stanley got up superbly and nodded it in. A tremendous save by Gary Pierce. Only could push it into the air, and Finiston was there to get up and force it over the line. Chelsea three, Wolves three. Yeah, it was disappointing in one way, but um, it was also before the match would have been happy to get the draw because they were. I think they were top in the table at the time, and we were uh, in the second or third position. So we were chasing them, and obviously to go there and to get a point would have been, you know, we, we would have been happy that before the start. But obviously when you're 3-1 up with about five or six minutes to go, 
you, you, you do expect and you should really win. Ball, Hibbert, Daly. Nice ball, Hibbert. Yes! Ken Hibbert. One nothing. 28 minutes of the first half. Really was something. Real old-fashioned wolf stuff that. From defence to driving attack in one blistering ball through the middle. And Hibbert, keeping his head, tucks it away neatly. Good challenge by Kenya. Carl losing to Ross. And Morris Daly gets there. Steve Daly. Willie Carr, all super stuff, and hit it! 2-0. 27 minutes into the second half, Kenny Hibbert wraps in his second goal of the game. And again, a beautiful bit of attacking football by Wolves. Steve Daly playing a prominent part in it. Driving on, confusing... Substitute David Jones, releasing his pass perfectly to Willie Carr. Willie Carr spotting Wood coming off his line, tried to chip him. Wood got half a touch, cleared out to Hibbert, and he drives it into the net. Short for Daly. Steve Daly. Clock in. Steve Daly. It's Ross going with Steve Daly. Ross doing just enough to uh, put his man off. Lions. Well stopped by McCall. A bit in. And a break down now for Daly. Is it number three? Yes, it is. Three Nelly. Steve Daly hits fifth goal of the season. And that surely wraps it up. 33 minutes on the second half. Gone and the Wolves fans rise to Steve Daly as he makes it 3-0. Again, Everton hesitant, not getting the ball away clean. And Daly going left side, kept his head as the goalkeeper came to him and drives it in for a superb third goal for Wolves. Thomas's throw. Pechik. Pechik still in there. King. Pearson. Looks good. Penalty. Bob Hazel, the culprit. Unlucky. But the tackle had to be made. So King setting a nice through ball to Pearson. Hazel a bit stranded. A scissors tackle. On Pearson, there was no hesitation by referee White. I don't think too much argument by Wolves either. Chance for Ross to score his uh, third goal since joining Everton from Arsenal. Both of them are penalties so far. Yes, 3-1. 41 minutes of the second half gone. Trevor Ross really is deadly from the penalty spot drove that one high to his left and Bradshaw well there was no chance that he was going to save it well if you look at the team that Everton had got there and you look at the team that we had we got a few players coming in there we had um, an Irish lad called Morris Dale Norman Bell who were new lads to the team um, was Mark in Patching playing? I think Martin had just broke into the team as well. So you just got to sort of um, the youngsters coming into the team as well. And to beat a team like um, Everton at the time, I mean, they'd got, um, I think they'd called uh, Trevor Ross was playing. And they'd got a few players in that team. And that was a very good winner to uh, And I would say that the young lads were just coming through at the time and playing 
went into a team and uh, they were doing well. Delicate chip from Willie Carr there as well. Yeah, the wee man was uh, brilliant. Um, he could see that. He knew what he was going to do. And um, it was just unfortunate the goalkeeper uh, was about 10 foot tall. <laughs> um, but um, we stuck the ball in the back of the net, didn't he? He was there to finish it off. Yeah. Lights on now. Game less than 20 minutes old, and Andy Graynar free. 1 0. Long ball works for Wolves. Andy Gray makes it as Caton lost it, and the ball through Corrigan's legs for 1 0. And that's 17 minutes of the first half gone. Hughes, daily forward, Roger Palmer going for it, and he slipped it in. coming in, the cross misses out Gray and Richards, Hibbett lets go, Corrigan saves and Hibbett nods in the rebound, Parkin and Richards has gone completely free, picked up now by Henry, Thomas, problems here and that's a goal for Jeff Farmer. 3-1. No, it's not given. There's an infringement, and from the referee's indication, I think he's giving handball. There it was. Ball is played in here. And was there a handball or a push? Well, I thought that the referee's gesture was indicating handball, but if there was anything, it looked like a push. Donaghy. Same towards Bennett, but it fell between him and Henry. Bennett. Cross towards Dana's head, but Berry got it away. Now Daly. Not allowed a gap to shoot through. Donachy. That's easy for Hughes. Oh, no, it's not. It's a goal. No, it's turned wide by Bradshaw. Bennett came in hard on that after Hughes had taken it down on his chest didn't control it and Bennett got the shot away and it was just with the seat of his pants that the goalkeeper saved harassed by Daniel Thomas obstructed by Daly Wolves making something out of nothing there simply because of the harassing that their midfield men are prepared to do Peter Daniel it was coming through that time but all three of them Hibbert, Daniel and Carr have been very sharp after the ball parking Thomas first time cross header by Caton it's come to Daniel and he scored 3-1 to Wolves cross headed out by Caton but Daniel thrashing it back through the penalty area and that makes it 3-1 I think so many of the players through the 70s stuck together John, Jeff, yeah. you, Willie from the yeah. mid-70s. Yeah, yeah. uh, Waggy was there for 
the 70s and 70s. Mm. So many players, Frankie Munro, we can go on and on. But they were great days. Oh, mm. great days, yeah. Some good players, some good characters. Yeah, we stay friends. I mean, that's the most important thing. Mm. Well, till tonight. Yeah. Till tonight. We are friends. That's the waves. Yeah. 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 Squeak's going to be in terrible trouble. I mean, I mean, shit, so, yeah. if, if no one sees that brandy glass oh, anywhere near him, you know, he's, he's a this, dead man. If that appears on this, and this video, cigar, I don't know what's going on. And this cigar. No, I've got nothing to do with that. Anyway, lads, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Welcome, Joshua. Cook whatever I said to me. <laughs> okay.